Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This is one of our initiatives from the Plymouth Historical Society, and we call it Memories of Plymouth. This is season two. Stories, collections of stories, thoughts, memories that our townsfolk have, and we've asked them to come in and share. And today, our invited guests, I'm so excited to share both of them with you for the next hour or so. We have, I should say, uh, am I going, is it going to be okay if I call you Manny later on? Absolutely. Uh, all right. Uh, officially, we had Manuel Marquis Sterling, and we have his wife Gloria with us. We're going to be sharing, um, I think, some interesting facts about their life prior to coming to Plymouth, but we're going to focus on memories of Plymouth today. Greetings. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having us. <laughs> I'm excited to see you both again. <laughs> okay. It's such a wonderful project. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's, it's a great project. The first few questions really are about yourself because we're going to assume that there's one person in this community who may not know you. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're just going to ask questions of your name, where you came from, when you came here, when you were born, etc. I will get personal. I might ask you what your age is if you don't mind, otherwise you just give me these fingers and say no way. So let's begin. Please state your full name. Um, Manuel Marcus Sterling uh, is a hyphenated name. Uh, I will explain a, a, a little bit what happened there. I was born in Cuba mm -hmm. in 1931. I won't tell the age, I will let the viewers figure it out. Calculate it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gloria? I am Gloria. Uh, in Cuba, I was Gloria Sanchez Bayan de Marquez Sterling. Here, I lost all my parents' names and became just Marquez Sterling. And most of the time was a Sterling. And in school, it was Senora. Mm, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see. When did you come? When did you come to Plymouth? Plymouth? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Plymouth. Uh, mm -hmm. 1966, if I remember well, I answered a, a, an announcement in the Chronicle of Higher Education that they were looking for a historian. And I was at that time teaching in Maine in Ricker College. So I answered and they invited me here for an interview, and the rest is history. Here I am. Did he have to pull you along the way? Were you happy to come to Plymouth? Yes, because I had had, well, it was very, it was hard living in 1960. We never came to stay mm -hmm. in the United States because we thought, Cuba is so close, and there is so, the Russians are there, and we're fighting in Vietnam. They have to help us get back our island. It was only when the missile crisis, and President Kennedy was explaining that he turned to me and he said, throw all the boxes, we're not going back. And I said, why? He says, because now we're part of the Cold War and we will never, wow. they never, they, nobody will help us, nobody. Yeah. So he said, and I have to change jobs. We were in Washington and I loved Washington. He was teaching then at a prep school, Spanish and Latin. And he says, I don't have two PhD. I want to teach at college. So he got his job in Maine at Ricker College for two years and then we came here because it was closer to the family that were in New York, in New York and Washington. Yeah. So uh, Holton, Maine was very far. It was a nice town mm -hmm. and people there were lovely and the, the, the college the president had been president of um, American University in Cairo mm -hmm. and had retired mm -hmm. and had retired to the little college in Maine. And uh, we didn't have, for example, a faculty wives like we had here. But the wife was 
such a lady, and she had a tea for the whole faculty every Friday. So we always got together, and you know, we pulled together, we helped each other as a faculty. So it was a very, mm. no, I left Holton, but I was very happy to come to Plymouth. I, I think your story of Cuba will be most interested to our audience. So we will have that another day, if you don't mind. No, Absolutely. where we can totally yes. focus yeah. on how you got here. Um, uh -huh. There's a lot of people that say what you just said, that you were only going to come for a couple of years. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we didn't know how long it would take. Well, but. <laughs> let me tell you this, Luis. When we came looking for places to live and so on, I had already been asked by the dean. And we entered from 25, you know, exit 25. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the grounds there had a fence. A wooden fence that oh, was. Oh, the, the, you know, the, where, the, the, where the college M, owns it yeah. now. And <laughs> it was, the boards were falling, and, and then they had a big uh, 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 sign painted with white paint and so on. And, with uh, a nasty word. <laughs> a nasty word that begins with S. <laughs> and, and then Gloria looked at it and said, and asked me, how long are we going to be here? And I said, two years. Two <laughs> that years. was in 1966. <laughs> okay. So I'm making the assumption, like many other people, you fell in love with Plymouth over totally. time. Totally. Totally. People, From the, the college. Mm -hmm. Manuel was very happy. Uh, in his department, there were only three, so he could see that he could grow, you know. And, exactly. And, uh, and I didn't start teaching right away because um, Lowly was still at home, but maybe Barrett ca called me to see if I would teach some classes in Spanish at the college with, um, what was his name, uh, Conchita's husband, Spaulding. Spaulding. They, Spaulding. They, they and I they were, teach. they didn't have a full-time uh, teachers for Spanish. Yes. It was only on uh, when Nancy uh, McDermott came that, but um, I was home and uh, then Loli started kindergarten mm. and uh, the school was right behind our house because we lived in the big brick house on Merrill Street in the front. It had been the Lenentines and they rented us. And uh, so they just crossed and went to the school right there. It was perfect. It, it was, was perfect. perfect. It was you have children. Uh, yes, uh, three girls. And the names? Uh, Gloria, Caroline. Don't uh, say Caroline. No, she Carolina. Carolina. And Dolores, mm -hmm. Maria Dolores. She Loli. 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 Everybody calls her She Loli. doesn't mind the Loli, but Carolina yeah. wants to be Carolina. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's a girl for you. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So they all had their education at Plymouth? Yes. Elementary Here, school? Here, the elementary and the high, high school. school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. You've, you've both been involved in education for quite some time. I've been involved even when I was in Cuba and I was practicing law. At night time I was teaching at the Candler University. It the Methodist University. The Methodist University that they had opened in Cuba. Mm -hmm. a beautiful project to attract students from Central America and, and so on. Wow. And, uh, and he did it for free. And I did it for the first year he, for free. He wanted to help the university establish itself. Yeah, I believe in the in He the, thought it was very important yeah. to have that university to serve the Methodist kids from all over South America and Central America. What a visionary. What a visionary. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Did you teach at all when you were in Cuba? No, I was at the university. I was going to end up with a doctorate in philosophy and letters, but then they, they uh, closed the university and I ended up with just the four years for my um, well, my father wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be an artist, but he didn't think that was a good idea. So yeah. <laughs> and this is why we'll talk about this a little bit later. <laughs> All right. All right. He, uh, so I went to, I, I, I volunteered teaching in my school. My school, my, it was a, a Catholic 
school, but they had they ran a school for uh, children that couldn't pay. So I volunteer teaching there. And um, but you know, I think this is where you both get your community spirit is giving back. Well, you know, yes, my, yeah. my in my mother's family, uh, there were three daughters, and they all were teachers. Okay. And uh, <laughs> when they decided I should start kindergarten, I had such a tantrum that they decided, okay, she can stay home. And they mm -hmm. taught me, my aunts and my mom, that what they were teaching anyways, mm -hmm. um, until I went to second grade. <laughs> Wow. Now, you said uh, giving out. That's been my teaching philosophy from the first day mm. that I walk into a classroom, that I have learned all of that to pass it to the f next generation. And that was my, f but I am very enthousiast enthusiastic <laughs> about my own subject. You know, I'm at home getting ready to go to an eight o'clock class. And I said, boy, I have to teach today the Plantagenets in England and so on. Oh, this is very exciting. I think they are going to like this tremendously. Well, you know, students at 8 o'clock class in <laughs> don't get that in those. Mm -hmm. uh, something that happened 800 years ago. So that's my philosophy that's been said. I, I know this. I want you to know it, too. So... They must have shared your passion, though. The way you come across, you're so, um, you're animated in yes. your presentations, and you can feel your heart. You can feel your heart when you're teaching. E e I think so, yes. <laughs> yes that's obvious. Well, it's something, you have to teach something you love, and you know love. well, and feel uh, secure about teaching it. But at the same time, you have to have that, I always have that desire of passing it alone you know well you know how do you do that in Spanish you know <laughs> if, even now I volunteered for the um, teaching as uh, English as a second language at the um, what's the name of the place where Marcy uh, I mean uh, <laughs> before <laughs> Hannah for that village Oh, okay. the whole village. The whole village. The whole village. <laughs> mm -hmm. I haven't been doing it lately because of him that I had my time was not as I, free so as free. You know, you ask for uh, the, the students to uh, describe if they enjoy the class, and if it was okay and everything. And at the end, and you, uh, we had to do it. At the end, send it to the dean. But I read one of the comments, and this was, you can make you can make the fixing of an air conditioner interesting. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes are rolling. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> can do that. Would you like to, I saw you point, would you like to share, please? Oh, the, this, this, oh, please. this is me. Maybe I was like five. My sister, my mom, and my dad in this is not in Havana, this is in Santiago, Santiago Cuba. Santiago. And, Where you uh, were born. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my father decided that we should live in the country because the air in the city was not good for children. Yeah. He traveled a lot, so. And then he bought a little, like a little farm, but it wasn't a really farm. It was more like a summer place, but we lived there all year. And this is, uh, nice. it was called Dos Bocas, mm. two mouths, because two rivers got together there. Mm. And then, you know. A personal question, how did the two of you meet? <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> Teaching again, and music. And music. You know, I am a big fan of, one of my passions from since I was 10 or 12 years, the, the opera. And I had a friend who was giving a series of opera appreciation uh, lessons, and he asked me, would you come and give a lecture on Italian opera? Because I just finished German opera. Oh. And I said, and I said, sure. And I went, and, and she was sitting Wait, right there. In why the was she there? <laughs> in my neighborhood, a lot of us 
girls that were going to the university at one point when Castro started putting bombs and stuff like that they closed the university uh, for a while and we were like mm. so one of our neighbors said these girls cannot just be here without doing nothing so she organized with his friend Pedrito yeah. a class for musical appreciation yeah. and he would come and have his lecture, and then on Saturdays we would go to the Lyceum um, to because the the symphonic always had concerts on Saturdays yeah, afternoon in yeah. the theater. So we would there mm -hmm. uh, complete our lesson for the week. So that lesson was Italian opera, and I. He sat next to me and then talked to me and my friends. Ooh, I said, he's an old man. <laughs> I was 17, he was 24. He was already <laughs> a was lawyer. <laughs> Listen, he was a lawyer. He was, I had never dated anybody so old. <laughs> so <laughs> how could he be interested in me? So he started dating. He asked me to two concerts and an nice. opera. And my father then said, if that boy wants to keep dating you, he has to talk to me. <laughs> yes, said, very old fashioned. By the way, we went. We never went anywhere not chaperone. Not until we got married. Uh -huh. That wasn't something we did. Uh -huh. And he went and talked to my father. <laughs> what are your intentions, young man? Oh no. <laughs> he meant. Are you serious? Oh, I know what he meant, Manny. <laughs> can you can you be an old fashioned? Well, my father was extra old fashioned. He mm. wasn't not. Oh, uh, oh yes. The regular father. <laughs> he was more protective than. <laughs> this is going to take two hours, I think, <laughs> the way we're going. <laughs> Why don't um, I'll finish off this part of it and just say how many years or when did you come to Plymouth as a professor? When did you retire? Same thing. When did you start at the high school? When did you finish? And then we'll go on to um, a few more reflective questions. Okay. Uh, as I said, I came here in 1966. Okay. And we were thinking that perhaps, perhaps we would move on to some places. But as I said, I, I fell in love with the with the town. I never. Being ex was exposed to a country life, and that was my first mm -hmm. experience, and I love it. And when did you retire from Plymouth officially? Uh, officially, <laughs> officially, nineteen ninety-eight. Nineteen ninety-eight, nineteen ninety-six. Yes. So, mm -hmm. okay, Gloria. I was called. Well, Plymouth High School dropped mistake, <laughs> Latin. And they put Spanish. I took Latin. And everybody should. And uh, Mr. Sulius called Mady Barrett to see if she had anybody that could start Spanish, the Spanish program. And he said, I have. I was doing the part time at the college, you know. Yeah. And <laughs> she said, Yes, I do. So she sent me to George and he interviewed and he said, Okay, you have the job. I started with two classes of Spanish one, which were like 30 each. <laughs> Everybody wanted to take Spanish. <laughs> and then the next year was two, two ones and one two or two twos. And then the next year was two ones, two two, and then a third. Wow. And I retired in 96. 96, a couple of years before Manny. Well, he was mm -hmm. going to retire in 2000 because the millennium. The millennium. The, but the. he was so jealous that I was <laughs> <laughs> home and doing <laughs> what I liked. <laughs> the next few questions will be uh, your reflections on the town of Plymouth. You've been here for such a time. You've seen so many changes take place. So let's try to talk about a few of those changes if we can. How would you compare the town today in 2018 to when you arrived? It's a large question, yes, I know that. But what are the differences that you have seen? Well, it was more a village. Now it has grown in the sense of all the area of downtown and what 
was the village. Um, it's really student housing. So we have moved out. We picked Plymouth instead of any of the other towns because we wanted, first we heard the school was very good. It was a lab school and that was excellent. And then it had a hospital. So we thought that was it. We didn't want, and we didn't want to be traveling and driving kids and stuff like that for programs after school or anything like that. So we decided to move uh, into the town of mm -hmm. Plymouth. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very nice town. It had a theater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It had everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're right. It, it's interesting, from village to a, a large town. Village yeah. to a large town today. Yes, At but least, I, I tell yeah. you what, uh, first week or so that I was here, I was doing some fixing up and I needed to go to the hardware store. And there was uh, uh, Watson Rand. And he said, what do you need? I said, I need this and this and that. When I was going to pay, I realized I didn't have the money there. And it's, I said, I am embarrassed, Sarah. I don't, I don't have more money. She said, Go, uh, come no. back tomorrow. Uh, I tell you, I, I stood paralyzed like that because I never seen that. So, mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. you couldn't get a lovelier, lovelier man than Mr. Adams, mm -hmm. and yes. Adams Supermarket. And it was Clay's and Adams, and it was mm -hmm. the Samaha, the the shoe store mm -hmm. and the dress oh. store, and mm -hmm. and then the the well, what it was, ball piece, That's you right. know, and it was a pharmacy there too. Well, we had quite and a then Guyers had a pharmacy too before the town That's and right. campus, mm -hmm. and so it was complete, it was perfect, the perfect, and town. all full of nice people. That's great. That's great. So you, when you walked on the main street. You knew the people. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and they knew us. Mm -hmm. If you, on my next question said, if you were surrounding yourself now with your family members, your daughters, you're chatting away, what um, events can you remember during the last 30, 40 years? What events have taken place in this town that have stayed with you and you wanted to make sure that your kids knew about it so they could pass it along as well? Mm. It could be weather related. It oh, could be the fire, the congregational church yes, fire. Yeah, that was very. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we could it, smell the uh, fire, the smoke up in the hill. Up in the hill, yeah. yeah. So, wow. Uh, so it's just the buildings yeah. of the dorms, and you know, um, it became very noisy where we lived. <laughs> so you moved. So, well, we lived five years in that house All because right. there were not that many houses available that uh, in Plymouth. Really, no, there weren't. There weren't. And uh, mm -hmm. we finally found the one on, on it used okay. to be Stagecoach Road. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. And uh, mm. neighbors, in, and the house we mm. bought was built by Tapley. Mm -hmm. And he Phil decided, Phil Phil Tappley. Tappley. Yes. Phil and he decided they were going to build above, in in, in the house on the top of the hill, mm -hmm. and uh, all my friends, my kids, carpool to go to the ballet classes. There was a, a, a ballet teacher that was the wife of um, the chairman of the physical education department, Jenny Harm, Jenny Harman. Mm. Hartman. Paul, Hartman. Paul Hartman. Paul was the and um, she would teach in Holden School. They would let her teach downstairs in the multi-purpose room they had. And we all carpool the Hansons across the street, um, the Craigs, the Crawleys used to be Mary Crawley. Mary Crowley. Across from mm -hmm. us. Mary Pillsbury Crowley. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Pillsbury. Mm -hmm. And um, so that little group of girls, and then when the house came for sale, Betty Hansen called, Gloria, and Christine Gray, Gloria, Gloria, there is a house for sale. I said, we probably can't afford it, you know. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> on your so salary? On your salary? Uh, yeah, oh. right, right. Oh, yes. I, that oh, house, yes. I think Good we paid $34,000. That was a big, 
amount of money for it. $34,000. Yes. Let me ask another personal question. When you came to Plymouth, what was your salary? Oh, <laughs> it's a good story about that. Yes. Um, in 95, uh, He started. 9,500. I plus, started with that. Plus, you know, if he got any night courses. When I came for the interview from Maine, I had to drive five hours, so you can imagine. Uh, said, I asked Gloria, what would you take as a salary? And we were making that less than that, much 87. less. 87, and he was teaching in Loring Air Force, and yes. you know, um, I mean, at and, night. And uh, mm -hmm. we agreed that, you know, 9,000. So the interview, and then at, at the end, Harold Hyde said, well, we are ready to uh, offer you a position for 9,500. And I said, okay, uh, I have to call my wife uh, or go home. And he said, go home and discuss it with her. So I came down from the hill. <laughs> and you remember the booth right there information? <laughs> I do. I do. Okay, so mm -hmm. there was a telephone there. Mm -hmm. I called her and I said, I like the town, I like the people, uh, and blah, blah, blah. And she said, well, how much are you offering you? And I said, 95. What did you tell them that I was going to discuss it with you? Okay, turn around, you discuss it already. <laughs> Go back and say you accept it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember your salary when you began at the high school? Oh, my God, yes, it was 1500 Because I only taught two classes. Oh, part-time. And they kept part me part-time until I was teaching five classes. And I say finally to George, I'm quitting if I don't get full time, because the only thing I don't have is a study hall. <laughs> and? and he said, what? I said, sorry, this is not right. <laughs> so the school board said, and the superintendent was Mr. Bo Dr. Bo Bowie. Mr. Bowie. Bowie. And he said, uh, oh yes, you know, and they put me on full time. And then I said, and I want those four years counted in my, and he says, it's okay. You're a tough woman. Well, <laughs> I, it wasn't my fault that they just started the program. I was there. I, I, I tell you what, one thing, uh, I am a person that observes the landscape and the architecture of places and so on. And, and this is for the future. I don't know when they will see this. this. But uh, right now, uh, people don't realize it. When you stand right there uh, next to, what's the name? The trolley car now? No, it changed the name or whatever. Fra Frasers. Frasers. Okay, Frasers. Now, you look up and you have the, the tower of... of uh, Rounds Hall. Rounds Hall, Mary. which is neo-Romanesque sty style. Mm -hmm. And then down the town hall, which is the same thing. And uh, and the other tower way up in the hill for the library. No uh, and Mary Lyons. And mm -hmm. then at the end a mm -hmm. portico of Mary Lyons with the classic, you know, Greek and our or little Roman. Uh, uh, the courthouse. And the, yes, the court. Uh, and I said, this is wonderful. wonderful. There are very few towns of this size that had this wonderful. Uh, amazing history, view, so. amazing history, and you're exactly. right. Absolutely. And visually, yeah. too. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful, it's beautiful, I absolutely. Agree. I agree, totally, totally. What major changes, again, have you seen over time since when you came? Physically, structurally, what's happened? Well, you know, the going out of town. Oh, sure, uh, Tenny yeah. Mountain Highway. Tenny Mountain Highway. Tenny Mountain. Mm -hmm. um, Yes. What well, they thought the downtown would you know the downtown isn't going to disappear. You know, you have all those walking kids buying stuff anyways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Plus, you know, you rather <laughs> I've always loved to shop downtown first. Of course now we don't have a supermarket. There used to be two. That's right. That's right. And First National. Yes. And, and Adams's and, and Adams and then yeah. you had mm -hmm. the corner one mm -hmm. you know, the little one. Yeah. And uh so the changes have been going out into the, but actually, and I'm glad about it, that there's not big changes in our 
downtown. Mm -hmm. It's been always it has, like what he says, yeah. you know, that that view, the the green, the little the common, the common the is common. gorgeous, you know, mm -hmm. the the and, and so it, it's it's very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. That's well said. <laughs> well said. <laughs> okay. Let's see. If there was a person in your family who influenced you, who might it have been? I, I guess I'd like to do twofold. A person in your family that influenced you, and maybe in both of your positions, your professions. Was there a person here at Plymouth, within the Plymouth confines, that influenced you? I, I I would say when I came here, I wanted to do well because I I said I said I'm going to to stay here for a while and, and uh, two years, Manny. <laughs> two years, <laughs> and then I start uh, observing the, the colleagues, you know, the teachers and so on, and they want to impress me more for the love that he had for Plymouth was Henry Vidum. And I said, he is my role model. Mm -hmm. I never told him that mm -hmm. until very, very recent before he died. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, Henry, you were my role model. I'm sure he appreciated it. Yes. It's nice to know that you're so well he thought of. Influenced me. That's yeah. great. That's great. Me, I think there were two at the beginning of my uh, career and a little bit. Uh, Mady Barrett was one, and the other one was George Sulius. Hmm. Could you expand a little bit on that? Why? I, you know, he was a lion, and everybody Wait was. Wait a minute. Who is the lion? A lion. Wow. No, who was the lion? George Sulius. There we go. Thank you. No, George. That's and everybody was afraid of him, okay. but he has a tender part, and if you did your job the way you were supposed to, and you had eating That's great. out of you. That's great. And he cares so much for the kids and the school and the teachers. That's great. So, mm -hmm. you know, he was a big... Uh, I had good people that were my bosses around me. So, you know... For so many of us, we didn't know anybody other than George Zulius. He <laughs> was the <laughs> principal for such a long time. Well Jim Demers was another good principal. He was after me. You're right. You're right. He was a good, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's great. That's I had great. feel for just a little bit. <laughs> oh, my husband. Oh, let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, he would have been wonderful. <laughs> he decided to go to better things. <laughs> let, me, let me put this. Mm. I think Henry was the only person everybody called call me Manny. It doesn't bother me. But Henry was the only person that always said Manuel. Your full name. Mm -hmm. And with that wonderful voice. He did have a wonderful voice. I mean, he? those readings he did. During the holidays? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, he have American trounce the names, great sounding names like Richard <laughs> become Dick and Theodore Ted. Mm -hmm. So, you know. It, it's nice to be called by your formal name. Yeah. It means yeah. something. Your parents must have had some memory in mind to call you Gloria, right. to call you Manuel. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that's great. Well, did you have a best friend in Cuba? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Now? Uh, no. 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 But I... then, then, before you left. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And the name? Lydia was one and Isabel was the other. And the reason for the best friend? We all went to the same school right. and mm -hmm. lived in the neighborhood. All right. Then. And had similar parents. That's, that's, that's I was right. sitting in, in the center of the university. There's a little plaza, beautiful. And uh, to begin the first year, my studies, and here comes walking this uh, person uh, about my age, and he sat down uh, next to me, and he asked me, who are you? And, so, 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 so. and then we went for five years, six years, months, um, and he was my best friend there. And his name? Uh, <laughs> Agustin Cruz. You'd have to say it one more time. 
Agustín Cruz. Okay. Okay. Uh, when you came here, you were pretty busy having children and you're staying home and you might be teaching part-time. Part uh, you had talked to me once before about the women's group that you had at the university. Could you oh, faculty-wise. Thank you. It was wonderful. It was the wives of the faculty, and we would get together once a month at different houses. And when you were new, they would introduce you to the things in town that you were supposed to, you know, the baby doctor, the da 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 da, and you would hear all about that and where to get the best things. And they were your welcome wagon. They were our mm. well. Yes, mm. it was, yeah. and um, they were very active. In, in many things came out of faculty wives. Uh, Ski and Skate Sale was one of them. Another one, believe it or not, was uh, Friends of the Arts. Started very little. Started because Mary Taylor had asked us to bring cookies and pastries to different openings that she was going to have at the library with the consent of, um, you know, um, I just said her name at the beginning of the... Uh, no, no, the librarian, our friend. Janice Gallinger. Janice Gallinger, <laughs> that went to Milan with us. We're doing very well together. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I was born in 1938, so I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I can do these things. <laughs> and um, um, the book club, um, the gourmet club, uh, there were a lot of different uh, groups that came and be not only was for faculty wise, but included the uh, community, beautiful. Uh, the women in the community, That's beautiful. and uh, it was it was very nice. Yeah, that's wonderful. And we used to meet sometimes at Rita's. Uh, that's how small we were. Mrs. Hyde. And that's uh, well because Rita yeah. was a co-worker with me mm -hmm. in the high school. That's right. Yes. So we became very close. For that's another big influence in my life. Rita, mm. she was. That's great. Yeah. And, uh, and she was a protector. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be so terrified uh, in the old school. When I went to do the Mimio, it was in the basement, and all the men were there smoking. They were smoking down there. And then I had to go through them. And I was young, and you know, I said, Rita, oh, I hate going through all those men to do the Mimio. I said, Gloria, make believe that they're cabbages. <laughs> Mrs. Hyde said that. Yes. <laughs> oh, she had the best she sense of fun. humor. That's great. She used to envy my lunches because Manuel used to make my lunches. And I would be, says, Harold won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a busy man. I'm going to ask you in front, I think the audience can see this, but could you share? I, I've asked you to bring in some artifacts today, but um, this is quite unique for us to see. So uh -huh. if you could give a little bit of the background, maybe one of the sword, but what it represents to you. Okay, this is a replica of the, uh, of the uh, El Cid swords, okay? Uh, they had names, you know, in the Middle Ages they gave names to their swords. And mm -hmm. um, as I teach that area, I saw it in store or something. And I said, I have to have it, and I bought it. It came from Toledo. It came from Toledo, which were great sword makers in the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. and so all of this uh, is is not in the original, okay? Right. Because uh, the original was a fighting sword, okay? I wouldn't be able to handle it. No, yes, I have another one that mm -hmm. was given to me uh, in the medieval forum. Uh, as a recognition, mm -hmm. it's a 11th century, 12th century replica of the Crusaders. Mm -hmm. And it is so sharp that the mm -hmm. first day I, I took it and it cut myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't like to take it down. You mentioned the medieval forum. Yes. And that's something you've had a passion for for years. You brought it to yes. Plymouth. Could you share a little bit about that? Uh, you know, we were, uh, Dr. Chisholm and myself, we used to go in the spring to a forum of medieval subjects in Kalamazoo and then flying back, 
I said, why do we have to fly all these many miles and so on? Why don't we hold it here in Plymouth? So that was, it, it lasted for 30 years. 30 years. Yes, and I think it was very injudicious to uh, terminate it because, it, you know, also we had the major in medieval studies and we place students of ourselves in Stanford, in, in the best uh, American universities, mm -hmm. Brown University, mm -hmm. and so on. And mm -hmm. one that was my student in the University of Prague in mm -hmm. Czechoslovakia. Wow. So, and for very little money uh, that was. Uh, and we brought <coughs> here all the scholars, sometimes 200, 300. From around the world? From around, from around the, world. the world. And it was a day event? It was no, a two-day event. It was a week. Well, well the lectures. Uh, and yes, then, yes. Well, but, but yeah, well, it was a week because of all the running around. <laughs> okay. yeah, to, to yes, it was a week. <laughs> before the it's amazing. So. But you didn't mention that it was Dick, Chisholm, and you. But then you incorporated Mary Taylor in art. In art. Yeah. Integrated very much so. Yes, then. Uh, well, there were four the, of them. The subjects, uh, you know, uh, art. Manual mm -hmm. history, mm -hmm. Dick English, Mary uh, Art, and. Herb Otto was, was involved. I mean, uh, so very did. similar to the cluster approach, approach that the university is taking on now, yeah. where multidisciplinary yes, opportunities yeah, yeah. for the kids. That's beautiful. Yeah. That is beautiful. Um, I'm trying to reach a little bit. Maybe you can do a better job than I. But you made the comment that your father wanted you to be a teacher, but you wanted to be an artist. And could you share a little bit? Okay. When I first arrived in Plymouth, um, and I was home, I have a friend, Lin Chong. And they lived across the street from us. And she was finishing her degree here. And she said, oh, Gloria, you got to see what Carl Drerop is doing. Why don't you take, because I was doing some class of, and she said, why don't you take a class? I said, I can afford it, Lynn. You know, I, we just, come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, she said, come, come, I introduce you, and you can see what they're doing. So she introduced me to Carl, and Carl, <laughs> He was, he was so funny, and he loved Spanish girls <laughs> because they had lived in Spain. He did, he did. So he saw me as, I said, well, I'm from Cuba. He says, it doesn't matter, you came from Spain. I said, you're right. <laughs> and then she said, you know, I want, her, I want her to take the anomaly, but she can't afford the class. I said, oh, come, anyways. So he had me come and teach me, and I, of course I bought the materials, mm -hmm. but you know, I did. All these beautiful. Just beautiful. and these and just mm -hmm. being with him and he was such he ground his own glass. He didn't buy it. He taught us how to wash it from any impurities. He was such a perfectionist mm -hmm. and yes, such an artist. He was artist. a true artisan. True. The things he brought, I mean he the, his reds were so beautiful because he ground that grass wow. and then he washed it and washed it and washed it until it was totally pure and it was transparent by the time he used, you know. And he was a one-man show. Oh, totally. Totally. That's and how he, loved, yes. he loved to gossip. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll go on to the next subject. Any story. Uh, <laughs> it was funny. He was so funny. We're, we're starting to wind down a little bit. So one of my last questions is, you have a group of young professionals around you right now, and you have an opportunity to share some of your wisdom, your memories, your thoughts. What might it be? What would you say to these people that are 15 years old and making this up, 20, 25 years old even? You have to love what you're going to do. Yes. You cannot only think of how much money you're going to make or, you know, that will come if you do love what you do and you do it well. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I will always remember, take it to the graveyard, is uh, the opportunity that Trish Limber gave to me uh, to write the play 
to celebrate the uh, 150 years, 200. 250 years. <laughs> we forget the hundred of Plymouth. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and uh, all the time I was at home writing and so on, and I was in me, a Cuban who didn't know uh, was a Plymouth, uh, <laughs> so writing it, which also speaks um, uh, books about the American mind, he's open. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and, you and risk. And risk. You know, you want to risk. You, you know, mm -hmm. she said, I wrote a little play for children and we did it a year before or two years before. And then she got me, because at a meeting she turned to me and said, Manuel, you write very good dialogues. Why don't you write this play? Mm -hmm. And I said, sure. So when I went home, after that meeting was over, I sat down in the porch, and then I said, my God, what have I <laughs> Did you know? Well, Did she you know? was writing all the modern parts. And the lyrics. You know? she and wrote the, the of lyrics. course, mm -hmm. the lyrics. Uh, yeah, Manuel would write something, and he would show me a phrase. I said, she's going to get this phrase, and she's yes. going to make a song out of this, I, for sure. Can you imagine if you were in Cuba all these years? Would be would you be allowed to do this? Have the freedom? Oh, to do this, this year? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. No, no. You no. know the the play no. won the New England first uh, uh, prize. Mm -hmm. Right, and, right from and the when I they called me to speak to the audience, you know, and I said for years when I watch the Oscars, I always say how boring is this ceremony. Thank you to Pete that <laughs> told me I was a good, and then I said, I'm here, I am doing the same thing. It's an thing. amazing story to have someone with your background exactly. come here and have the privilege of writing the story about our town. Well, he didn't write it all by himself because he, mm -hmm. they, it was a collaboration. But it was, uh, yeah, the mm -hmm. music but I couldn't write him down with, mm -hmm. and so with on. you know, and, mm -hmm. and it was funny because the first rehearsal I saw, and. Uh, there were some things that they neither one of them like, and they went home to change the script and <laughs> came back, and they had changed the same things. <laughs> yes, exactly. They cut out, so we were in tune to uh, Two geniuses working together, what would you expect, right? <laughs> Honest to goodness. Honest to goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to thank you, truly. It's been an honor thank to you. have you. Thank this you was very you. fun. Very, very fun. <laughs> To our audience, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did today, another version of the Memories of Plymouth. Our town is precious. There is so much we don't know about our town, yes. and this is an opportunity just to snip it today. We need to learn more and celebrate yeah. what, we, what have. we have. Absolutely. So until next time, what do I always say to you folks? Keep taking pictures and pictures. Download the pictures. So important, label the pictures, and whenever there's a relevant story, put the story on the back because our future generations are going to say thank us. They're going to thank us for it. So until next time, thank you. I hope she's out. <laughs>